Let's take a look at my JVC NX7 and my scope screen home theater and talk about how I use installation modes and lens memory to zoom and manage content between different aspect ratios. It's all built into the JVC. It works really, really cool. All right, so we're gonna jump right in here. What I wanna show off in this video is a bit of a how-to in terms of using a projector. In this case, I have a JVC NX7 with a scope screen and how you set up to be able to use installation modes, also known as lens memories and such, for different types of content at different types of aspect ratios within your home theater system. I would encourage you, if you wanna see more about how I built the room and all of that, check back on the home theater playlist and other videos on the channel, particularly the home theater 2.0 in the vlogs where I recently rebuilt this entire room and actually did the scope setup. So what you're looking at is a 163 inch Seymour acoustically transparent screen, widescreen aspect ratio, of course. And I have the lights on kind of bright in the room right now, uh, showing this Kaleidoscape UI here. The Kaleidoscape UI is rendering in 16 by nine, and you can see kind of the lighter gray to the left and the right of the screen, the, the left or the right of that Kaleidoscape UI image, with, which shows the, the wider aspect of the scope screen. Anything outside of the, the actual UI profile and those lighter areas to the left and the right is the dark black. That's my curtain, velvet, wall, and so on behind there. And, my, and when I did the theater originally, I had a 16 by nine inch screen after realizing just how much more we use the, the room for movies. When I did the redo, I was really interested to get a wider aspect ratio screen, get my speakers behind it, uh, enabling the screen to go wider uh, and, and all of that. And I don't have a lens. I haven't gone to that level of, of system setup yet. I don't know if I will at some point uh, with a, an external processor um, and a physical lens and all of that. But uh, quite honestly, I find the installation modes and the built-in lens memory to be really, really awesome. And it works, works really great for my purposes. So in this video, we're gonna kind of go through the settings and some of the important aspects of the setup on the JVC itself. And then I'll give a little bit of a demonstration about how this, how this works. If you have, a lot of projectors nowadays have this. So what I'm gonna show kind of holds true for the entirety of the JVC NX line. As I understand it, it should work pretty much the same way on all the new NZ models or the NP5 and such, but other, other models that also offer similar features, whether they be Sony or Epson's and such, this, this idea of installation modes and lens memory setting is pretty consistently available on a medium to, I would say, a higher level projector. So if I go into the JVC menu here, note that there's a couple of different options. The first page has to do more about picture settings, the second as well. And it's really the third tab here, specifically titled installation mode, where this is kind of implemented and managed. So if I look at what I have set up, specifically in terms of ins installation mode selection, note that this projector has 10 modes. And as you can see, I'm using two of them effectively. Modes three through 10, that's just the stock naming. I haven't done anything with those. And so far to date, I've kind of set up two modes. I've set up a normal mode and I've set up what I'm calling here wide. And so normal for me defines something that's 16 by nine or essentially four, three. I would use the normal mode for something that might be four, three as well. But anything that's that's much wider than that, whether it's 235 or 240, it's kind of the same. I have it kind of zoomed to accommodate either one. That would be what I'm calling wide. And once you have these modes set up, of course, you can edit the names to your liking in terms of how they appear in the UI and the selections. And note also, too, that once you have kind of something set up as a base, at least in the JVC here, you are able to kind of copy settings and copy things over to another mode that's particularly useful and it plays into how I set this up to begin with as well. So what I would recommend if, if you're looking to exp experiment with this and explore it is set up your normal mode first, get all of the different things and elements and configurations for that set, and then make your copy, copy that over 
to another one of the installation mode entries so that you have a basis from which to work from and then customize that one and kind of always make the normal mode copy. So in terms of the different options and such of how you would set this up, there's a few things you need to do, right? First of all, you, you need to set all of your focus, zoom, and shift. And so if I go into the view of how this works, we can see under lens control, I have ability to change focus, zoom, and shift. It might be a little bit small. I'm trying to do this with the video kind of capturing the entirety of the screen so that you can, you can kind of see it. But basically what you want to do is I would recommend first setting your, setting your zoom and your shifts so that this, the image specifically fills the screen the way you want it to. And JVC has these nice kind of lines set up that show you what, where content would fill. Of course, the JVC projectors are the full kind of 4K, bigger than the 3840 by 2160. So that's why you see kind of the thinner lines on the far right. So a 16.9 image kind of fills in the center larger rectangle. And then you can see where a scope image would fill in there as well. So using the digital controls, right, you set your zoom, set your shift. And then after you have that fixed, you would want to set your focus to be nice and sharp in the way you want it to look. And from a lens memory perspective, if you don't have anything else that's particularly complex, right, there are options for masking and there are different anamorphic options. If you have that, it, it adds a little more to the, to the setup. And of course, the anamorphic stuff is more for if you're using a lens and how that lens operates. And, and in this case, using just installation modes, using lens memories, anamorphic would basically just stay off or for this type of a this type of a setup and some of these other items are really just global as well right installation tile i installation style ceiling mount with a front throw that's global because my projector of course is mounted actually right up above me where i'm standing right now no keystone and so on i also should note that i have my screen settings enabled in here using like the theater optimizer stuff so JVC allows you or gives you a code essentially depending on the make and model of your screen so that it knows the, the brightness characteristics and the gain characteristics and such of it. So here you have the opportunity or the ability to enter in the screen information as well as size and gain and that goes into a lot of the HDR processing and calculations and such. We will come back to this one in particular, the screen size, because this will play a role in the the execution of the installation mode settings. Suffice to say, while I have a scope screen, and again, it's 163 inch in that ultra wide screen diagonal, it makes for about 133 inch 16 by nine image. So in this case, the normal mode, the 16 nine image inside the wider scope screen, that's what I'm setting the size for, for this specific installation mode, this lens memory, this profile, and so I have that set for 130 inches in this case. So I'm gonna back out of the menu and I wanna pull up this settings memory here. And we're gonna go ahead and change things over to wide. So we can see here the screen is zooming in. It's shifting up the little bit that it needs to. And we can note a couple of things. One, this takes a little bit of time and you will get you will get that once the projector kind of moves everything around and kind of gets the stuff into the right positions and so on. You may see that screen blackout. I didn't speed that up and I'm not gonna edit the time to give you an idea of exactly how long that took and what kind of projector response sitting in the room you might expect to see. But we can see now that our installation mode, our current selected installation mode is wide. And I'll note a couple of other things. One. Note that I've still got a little bit of those gray bars on either side of the screen. I talk about this quite a bit in my prior vlogs, but I went for a larger screen than at least this projector at this throw distance can actually fill. I wanted to have a little more room for growth, and that's something that I'll probably deal with it down the road or in the future. Uh, other projectors may have bigger throw distance. I, I do have my projector moved back on its mount on the ceiling as far as I can get it 
but I have other options if I really wanted to, to do a little deconstruction and put the projector in a closet behind me. I don't know if I'll, if I'll take that step for someday, but I'm okay with this. What I'm effectively getting now is roughly the scope image that you would get out of a, say, 150 plus inch 16 by nine screen. So my scope image is quite a bit larger than it would be inside that 135 inch 16 by nine profile. It's not big enough to fill all of the space of my screen right now, but again, someday I hope that I'll get it there and I'm okay with it not doing that. Some people might scoff at that and say, oh, well you don't have super black bars and all that stuff on the sides. If I turn the lights off though, You'll find very easily, very quickly that, yeah, those it doesn't go completely black, but from a from an appearance perspective, it gets black enough for me. It's not distracting, it's way out to the sides. So I understand that there might be some purists that might scoff at me for doing it this way right now, but home theater is an evolution. You're not gonna always get everything that you want right off the bat. Sometimes you gotta work towards stuff. And so a future projector, a future setup, might change the ability for me to completely fill this screen. And when that time happens, I will be very much happier for having bought the slightly larger one. And in the meantime, my 16.9 image is larger than if I had bought a 150 inch scope screen or, or whatnot. So I don't feel a need to add masking in any of that. The other thing that you might note is that below the screen right now, we are seeing some of the Kaleidoscape UI. The Kaleidoscape still thinks it's throwing basically a 16 by nine image. If I were to actually play content, of course, I would not have picture information and such off of the bottom of the screen itself. But let's look at the settings here. So if I go back into the menu, notice now that we're in installation mode wide. And if I pull up the lens control and we take a look at the pattern, some of the pattern is going down below the screen. What I do with my, my ultra wide image is I do basically kind of set the bottom of the image to be the bottom of the screen. And I will, in an actual movie, ultra widescreen movie, I will have some of that uh, empty screen space on the left and the right. And I do have some of it at the top as well. You didn't really see that in the Kaleidoscape UI itself, but for the picture image, it'll be at the top. Again, it's okay. Our, our eyes, when we're looking at the screen watching a movie are focused into the center there. I have a very light controlled dark environment and so it doesn't bother me in the least to have a little bit of, of empty screen space. And someday in the future, I hope to really fill that. But you can get an idea kind of what the profile is here and how the lens control was set to kind of zoom and shift and then refocus to put the image on the screen in that way. So if I go back, the only other thing that I wanted to point out in terms of managing the installation mode here again is the screen size. Now in this mode, I am set for a 150 inch screen because that's the effective 16 by nine image that the projector would be throwing. As far as I understand things and based on my research and setting this stuff up, you wanna make sure that your screen size is set for the 16 nine profile of whatever scope and zooming and such that you're doing. So again, I have about a, a hair over 130 inch native 16 by nine space in the field of this screen, but when I do zoom for a scope image, it's basically an effectively a 150 inch plus 16 by nine inch screen. And honestly, that's really it. Again, you can do as many of these, you can do as many of these modes as you want, up to 10, which should be more than enough, I think, to satisfy um, all kinds of different aspect ratios. I will say one thing that I haven't done is set up basically a 185 to one zoom. If I were to do that, I would probably be able to get another four or five inches of effective size. And I probably will do that. I'll make a normal, a wide and like a middle setting that would let me be able to, to fill out the vertical space of a 185 to one aspect ratio movie, 178 to one or 177 to one being a 16 by nine movie. But more and more, I really do notice that we, we encounter 185 to one uh, pieces of content. And so might as well set up a third kind of zoom for that. So let's take a look at how this fills the screen. Topical right now, the new uh, Top Gun sequel just came out. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up. This is a 240 aspect ratio film. 
You might hear a little bit more noise in the background. The projector is running right up above where I'm filming. We are in HDR mode and all of that. So the I, I skipped over the black screening to resync the frame frame rate to move the filter in place for HDR and all of that. But I want to give an impression here of kind of what you get, what you can see, right, for that scope image, that 240 to 1 scope image filling the screen. So if I turn the lights on, there you can see the profile. Again, I move the image down so that the bottom of the image basically touches the bottom of the screen, which gives a little bit of that dead space on the left and the right and the top. Not a problem for me using the space and, and, and using the projector and all of that. So let's take this picture now zoomed in as we would watch scope content and go ahead and put it back to what that same image would be in a 16 by nine. So there's the lens movement. We'd probably get that black of the black out of the screen. In a second, it's readjusting its focus and such. It's not an instantaneous change. There's the blackout and there's the image back. So there you go. There's a scope 240 to one image basically inside a profile of 133 inch 16 by nine screen. Let's do this one more time. Installation mode wide. We're going to zoom it in, giving the perspective of just how much more picture information, how much more size is achieved. It's pretty considerable. It's impactful. I can't wait until I fill this whole screen someday, but I really like this capability and it's just awesome to have it essentially for free built in no expensive lens and it can be all set up and managed in everything just within the projector settings itself. I spent four years in this space with a 135 inch 16 by nine screen. Upgrading to the scope was a major factor and plan and goal when I did the, the over or the kind of the redo and the re-outfitting of the space. And I just, I love this part of it. I think it's awesome and I would recommend anybody thinking about their space to do the same. Start. My recommendation would be get the widest widescreen you can get that also gives you a nice sizable 16 by 9 image inside of it and get yourself a projector that's capable of managing the image in this way. If you can go all the way to, through and get the lens and, and get all of that as well, that's pretty sweet and the, the Lumigen or whatever it might be, the mad VR and, and such, but this works awesome. And it's by no means, this is by no means poor man, poor person's home theater. So there's the lights off. You can see just how the screen, the blank image of the screen melts away. I don't feel any need to bother with masking. There are, there are screens that can do automatic masking. They add a lot more cost. If you could get those as well in conjunction with doing this, that would probably be pretty awesome, and if, especially if you could trigger it off of a control system. Lots of different ways to do this hobby, but I, I feel that there's no compromises here. This is working really, really excellently. So if you have any questions about this, please ask away in the comments. I, if I missed anything or there's something else I can say about it that can help you understand this or set it up for yourself, I'd very much like to share that information, so please do let me know and I can answer your questions directly or make some follow-up videos as well that might have hit any points that I missed. Also, it, coming on the channel, I'll make a couple additional videos, a couple of videos around how I automate this process, both with my Apple TV and the Kaleidoscape using the Control 4 system. Suffice to say, when we sit down in here to watch a movie, I don't end up grabbing the, the projector remote and having to do as much manual management, particularly with, with the Kaleidoscape. For these different settings and picture modes and such and so i want to break that down how that works how it's all set up and those videos will be coming soon so let me know what else you'd like to see let me know what you think about this if you if you're at the next echelon and you've got lenses and you've got the lumigen and all that stuff sound off as well that's pretty awesome pretty awesome setup i'd like to hear how this works you know how all of this ultra widescreen management and stuff works for you. How are you doing it? And what do you think about it? Otherwise, please do all the regular YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Share this if there's somebody that you know that this video, that this video could help or inspire some ideas uh, to help them realize a the next level in their home, th home theater 
experience, and performance. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching.